Okay, we're on calculus section 2.3 on continuity on page 4 for this section. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sketch a graph. Given just some conditions like limits and uh, the interval that the function is continuous. And we have to put together what a possible graph would look like. So first of all, we want to pay attention to where is the function continuous. It's important that they give us this information because this way we know where to put breaks or jumps. So we are going, it, it looks like we're going to have a break at 2. From the left of 2, we're going to have some open value. From the right of 2, it's going to be a closed circle. I can tell that by this piece. Then we're going to continue on. It's going to be continuous from negative 2 to 4, inclusive. At 4, there's some kind of break where from the left, we have a defined um, continuity, and then from the right, there's some kind of open piece to it, and then you go on to positive infinity. So it looks like the domain um, is everything except negative 2 and 4. Actually, they're defined, but it's just defined in this middle section. So the domain is actually all reals, but it looks like there's two points in the graph where it's not continuous. We have a bunch of limits here as well. The limits are going to tell us where we have uh, particular y values that we go to. When we have plus or minus infinity, we should recognize that as asymptotes. Um, so we'll see where that puts us. Usually for these problems, the limits are listed in increasing order uh, of x values. So um, basically, I know I need to begin at negative 5 and go all the way to 6. I'm just going to go ahead and sketch out. Uh, an axis here, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5 there, up to 6 there. And the limit values are my y values, so I can get an idea of uh, the range of values. I have a negative 3 and a positive 5, so I'm going to go ahead and sketch that out. And we'll see if we need to adapt as we go. Okay, so we'll start out by looking at the first limit. The limit as x approaches negative 5 of the function is 0. And there's no superscript there, so that means from both sides of negative 5, the function is equal to 0. 0 is also included, um, excuse me, negative 5 is also included in this interval here, which tells us that the function is actually continuous at this point. So I'm just going to put a circle there. I know it's continuous there, so... Somehow the graph is going to go through that point. I'm going to save that marking until I have a little bit more information. I don't get any more information to the left, but to the right I do. So we've taken care of that one. Let's look at the next one. As x approaches negative 2 from the left-hand side, um, the function limit is negative infinity. So I know that that's going to be an asymptote. So I'll throw an asymptote in here. And as x approaches negative 2 from the left, it's headed toward negative infinity. So that means this graph must be headed down this way. So I'm going to back up a little bit now. Now that I can see that, I'm going to go ahead and continue this graph um, out this way. Now, I don't really have any information about what the graph looks like here. It could look like a lot of things, but I would say just keep it simple. It, it could be, you know, have more curvy or wavy or whatever. As long as it follows all the rules of functions and there's no other discontinuity there, you can make it look like whatever you want, but keep it simple. Okay, let's move on to the right side of negative 2. The limit of the function is negative 3. So we're approaching negative 3. It's my y value. So we're approaching this point. Um, and we need to look at continuity here. Since we're approaching negative 3, negative 3 is included in this interval. So it is continuous at negative 3, which tells me there needs to be a solid circle, closed circle, at the point negative 2, negative 3. So I'm going to place that there. Remember, it's okay for a value to exist on an asymptote. Okay, um, let's take a look at the next one. The limit as x approaches 0 from both sides of the function is negative 1. Negative 1 is, um, let's see, in this interval, so it's continuous at that point. So that means I'm going to have a point right there. 
and uh, since I have a couple points here, I can just go ahead and connect those. Again, this part of the graph can look like a lot of different things, but to keep it simple, I just make it a segment. All right, so uh, from the right side of zero, it's also going to be approaching that point. I'll hold off on the graph until I see this next piece. The limit as x approaches positive 4 from the left-hand side of the function is 2. Positive 4 is in this interval since it's a bracket. That means that it is, that should be a closed circle at 4. It's continuous from the left here. So the point is 2. So at 4, I'm going to get 2. So I'll put a solid closed circle there. And that's simply from the left, so we've taken care of that. I have these two points. I can go ahead and connect those with the segment. Um, as x approaches 4 from the right, the limit of the function is 5. It is continuous at 5. Excuse me, it's continuous from the left of 4. It is not continuous makes sense because I already have a closed circle here. The y value is 5, the x value is 4, so I'm going to come up here at 0.45 and make an open circle, which goes with this. And then the next one, the limit as x approaches 6 from both sides is equal to 0. It's continuous at x equals 6, so I'm going to put a closed circle there. And then I'm going to connect from my last point here. The only information I have past 6 is that it's continuous, so I'm just going to keep it simple and make it continue. It could curve. You could do different things with it, but might as well be simple with it. So that is a possible graph that satisfies all those conditions. The next topic is Intermediate Value Theorem. This is one of our calculus theorems. If you just read this through, um, sometimes they seem confusing, but we'll, we'll, we'll scope it out here and, and, and see what it means. If a function f is continuous on some closed interval between a and b, and if the function value at a is not equal to the function value at b, if the y values are different, then for any value of k that's in between the two y values, f of a and f of b, there exists some c value on the x-axis, that falls between the x values a and b, so that f of c equals k. The function value at c equals k. So I'm going to show you this picture. We'll just sketch out um, just some continuous function, because that was a requirement of the intermediate value theorem, and that's an important one. We have a closed interval, say from a to b. So we're going to go from this point to this point, and sometimes you can show um, kind of like mixing in your interval notation on your number line. You can show a closed interval like that. We have to verify that f of a is not equal to f of b. f of a is the y value here. f of b is the y value up here, and they are definitely not equal to each other. The theorem says, given this condition, if I have a k value that falls in between f of a and f of b, let's just pick one, then it has to correspond with some c value that falls in between a and b. So if k falls in between um, these two y values, then its corresponding x value is going to fall between a and b. That has to happen. And there are many possible choices for k and c that we could have there. So sometimes it's uh, easier to think about this theorem if you also consider where this intermediate value theorem would fail. Let's consider, um, let's consider a, a function that is not continuous. So let's say we have a function that does this, okay, and let's say my a value is over here and my b value is here. So it is not continuous on this interval, right? So we got f of b way up here. We got f of a here. It is possible in this scenario to find some value of k that's in between these two values. Okay. 
that does not have a an x value that goes with it. There is no value of x that satisfies the function to give us a value of k. It doesn't exist. Okay? So this is why continuity is important. It's critical for the intermediate value theorem to work. Okay? All right. On to the next.